Moving on now to the, uh, I've received notice from the Minister of Education, Mr. Peter Weir, that he wishes to make a statement, and I now invite the Minister to address the Assembly. Thank you. We wait with <laughs> bated breath for the um, result of the very close contest we've just taken part in. I would like to make a statement updating the Assembly on my capital uh, investment plans under the second call to the School Enhancement Programme, also known as SEP2. Uh, by way of background, the School Enhancement Programme was first announced in June of 2012, and the programme makes funding of between half a million and four million available for projects aimed at referring or extending existing school provision. And I suppose particularly for members that are maybe unfamiliar with the project, just make it clear that is not a new school build, but it is uh, refurbishing or extending existing school provision. The first call to SEP was launched in January 2013 and resulted in projects in 50 schools being announced uh, to advance in planning. 47 of those, uh, of those projects are either now complete or close to completion, with two currently on site. One project is on hold pending a decision on a major works project funded under the Fresh Start Agreement for shared and integrated education. Given the success of SEP1, on the 25th of January 2017, I made a written statement to the Assembly on my proposal to make a second call for applications under the programme. By closing date of the 28th of February 2017, a total of 165 applications had been received under the call. These applications were then assessed under the agreed protocol and separate priority listed created for primary, post-primary schools and special schools. To ensure a pipeline of SEP projects was maintained uh, in the absence of, of ministers, the Department's Permanent Secretary made an announcement in May of 2018 of 25 projects from the prioritised list to advance in planning. These, uh, these projects have an estimated uh, investment of 60 million. A further 16 schools with an enhanced investment of 40 million was announced by the Permanent Secretary in January of 2019. Today, I'm pleased to announce a further 18 schools which will advance in planning under the School Enhancement Programme. 12 of these are primary schools, five are post-primary schools, and there is one uh, special school uh, which will benefit in total from an estimated capital investment of about 45 million. Mr. Speaker, the 12 primary schools to advance in planning are as follows. Botanic Primary School in Belfast, uh, Carrick Primary School in Lurgan, Cliftonville Controlled Integrated Primary School in Belfast, Glen Craig Controlled uh, Integrated Primary School uh, close to Hollywood, Hollywood uh, sorry, Holy Child Primary School in Londonderry, Irvinstown, Irvinstown Primary School, Kilcooley Primary School, Kilinchy Primary School, St John the Baptist Primary School in Belfast, St Kieran's Primary School uh, Dunmurray, St Paul's Primary School in Micah Drive, Belfast, and Straban Primary School. The five post-primary schools are Glastry College, Ballyhalbert, St Louis Grammar School, Ballymena, St Patrick's College, Macara, Sullivan Upper School, Hollywood, and Victoria College, Belfast. And the 18th school, which will receive investment, is Riverside Special School, which is in Antrim. This is a significant investment, which will deliver much-needed capital investment uh, in schools, the school's estate, via the School Enhancement Programme. Improving the school's estate is a priority for me, and the SEP programme, I think, has been an excellent way of delivering capital works projects, which have an immediate positive impact on the schools and pupils. But as well as the education sector, today's announcement is not just good news for the schools themselves, but will also represent a welcome boost to the economy, especially the construction industry. In addition to this SEP announcement, I continue to advance the programme of major capital bills as well as a programme of much-needed minor works across the estate. I will also look uh, to invest in maintenance works across all schools to ensure schools are fit for purpose and enable effective teaching and learning for the benefit of all our, young all our children and young people. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Yeah. Thank you, Minister. And I'd like to call the Chairperson of the Education Committee, Chris Little. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a privilege to serve as chairperson of the Assembly Education Committee. I look forward to working with committee colleagues and the minister to ensure we deliver better education for all in our community. 
There are obviously many serious challenges facing education, to which we must respond decisively. Capital investment is urgently needed by many schools in Northern Ireland, and whilst this announcement is welcome news for a small number of schools, radical investment and reform is needed to ensure all our school facilities are fit for purpose. So can I ask the Minister, therefore, how and when he will establish the root and branch independent review of education envisaged by the New Deal proposals in order to deliver a reformed, integrated and sustainably resourced education system for all? Well, first of all, may I congratulate the member um, on his appointment to the, the chair of the Education Committee. I know from the previous mandate when he had worked as, as vice chair of his particular passion and involvement and knowledge of, of education. So I look forward to working with him uh, with the vice chair and indeed all the members of the education committee whenever they are appointed. Uh, he's right that uh, in terms of the announcement today, it's uh, call it even on the capital side, one piece of the, the jigsaw. And I think it's important as we move ahead that there will be a mixture of announcements, some dealing with minor works, some uh, potentially with further SEP um, programme announcements and also major capital works. I think it's important that as we move ahead that that uh, is part of an overall coordinated p position of and picture on how we're actually going to deliver, particularly the school estate in terms of, of education. Uh, he mentions about the need for reform and I would concur with him. Uh, it's undoubtedly the case that um, while for any incoming minister, there are major challenges out there in terms of resources. There is also a very strong need to ensure that, that we get the best possible delivery for all our children. So it is also an uh, issue of transformation uh, and of um, reform. And I think that anyone believing that it's simply one or other is the same. I, I would be working, I'm committed to the, um, uh, the new document in terms of the delivery uh, of that um, uh, of that. Uh, committee of looking at the uh, project, looking then at how we globally, if you like, reform education, and I hope to bring uh, proposals soon to the Assembly in, in connection with that. Thank you, Minister. Could I call Christopher Stalford? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very grateful to the Minister for his statement and the additional investment that will be going into the schools in my constituency, particularly in Botanic Primary School and in Victoria College. It is the ambition, or at least it should be the ambition of us all, that we have a school estate that's fit for the education <coughs> of our children. Uh, on the theme of all politics being local, can I ask the Minister, therefore, to indicate that he's prepared to visit Nettlefield Primary School on the Woodstock Road to see for himself the need for capital investment to improve the facilities in that particular school? I thank the, the member for uh, his comments. I, I suspect, uh, particularly when we're dealing with school enhancement programme and indeed capital build for schools. There may, I, I, uh, I have not great foresight, but I, I suspect that there may be a theme running through a number of these questions which may contain a certain level of um, local interest. And it's good that, that, that MLAs do have that local interest. I will consider, I, I will be, try to accommodate as many invitations as possible. Um, obviously, I, I don't want to give a specific commitment to an individual um, invitation. But certainly, I, I'll be trying, I think it's important that any minister, particularly an education minister, gets out and about as much as possible. Uh, there is, I think, across the system um, a need for capital investment. Uh, and indeed, what we need to ensure that any child is not disadvantaged because of the physical fabric or the lack of facilities that, that go through, any, uh, through the gates of any particular school. Uh, that means that, that any investment programme, any money that's made available has got to be done on a robust and impartial way within that. But as part of that, I'll be willing and more than happy to visit a range of schools across Northern Ireland. Okay, thank you, Minister. Could have called Karen Mullen, Vice Chairperson of the Education Committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Firstly, I'd like to congratulate the Minister on his appointment, and I look forward to working with, alongside you and all our members of the committee, progressing the work that we'd already been doing um, all along. Uh, and I also welcome today's announcement of much-needed capital investment, in particular for the Holy Child Prim Primary School in Craig in, in Derry, a school in my constituency that's over 60 years old and in much need of, of improved accommodation. I'd like to ask the Minister, given the crisis in the education budget, is it your intention to advance the programme of major capital builds and all our works across the school estate? 
I congratulate the, the member on her appointment to vice chair and I look forward. I know the work that she has put in over the last few years as the spokesperson for Sinn Féin on education and I look forward to her continuing that work and working through the formal structures of the, of the committee. Um, in terms of the wider picture, yes, it, it is undoubtedly the case that this is part of a, a wider picture, a wider jigsaw of a need for capital investment. The member, I suppose, makes reference to the financial pressures that are there in education. Uh, those are undoubtedly the case, and we'll be working with executive colleagues on a range of financial pressures uh, that are there, which need dealt with. I suppose there is a little bit more um, positive news in terms of the capital side of it, and in terms of um, major capital works, that's something we'll be looking to uh, advance as well. It's important that there is, if you like, a, a flow of works that, that are happening. Uh, that can then lead to a level of uh, improvement. It is undoubtedly the case, um, and I am sure various members will have particular schools that they would have in mind in their own constituency, that while I think there will be a considerable amount that will be spent on, uh, on school improvement uh, through a range of these, these projects, it is always the case that if there is more money that is available, more money can be spent. And to that extent, I think we're also trying to um, deal with a certain level of backlog of, of both maintenance work uh, and indeed a need to try and provide the best possible facilities uh, for all our pupils. Okay, thank you, Minister. Can I call on uh, Colin McGrath. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I welcome and congratulate uh, Minister Weir on his position of Minister. I know that will provide a certain amount of continuity. And I look forward to discussing important issues such as special education needs and indeed youth services uh, in the period ahead. Um, with the announcement today, though, the, um, there can be a bit of a concern sometimes that the gap between the announcement and the shovel actually going into the ground can be too long. Could the Minister give us some assurances to the work that he will undertake uh, to ensure that these projects are delivered in a timely manner? Yeah, I think, um, and again, also welcome. I, mean, I, I hope. Um, they obviously, the members become the chair of the TEO committee, uh, and I hope the TEO's gain doesn't become education's loss. Uh, and uh, while it's obviously not my position to appoint members to the, the education committee, I certainly value the experience that the, the members brought on the, the issues, again, as the SDLP education spokesperson. Um, the one advantage, I think, with the school enhancement programme, and it is now a well-trialled and well-worked uh, scheme, has been, unlike an it can be the case of any capital build, whether it's schools, hospitals, or a range of other things, that if you are looking at um, a major capital program involving new works, there can be a reasonable, a very long delay between announcement and completion. The advantage, I think, of, of the school enhancement program, because it is effectively of a scale between half a million and four million, because it effectively is work on site, and so therefore, for instance, one of the processes which happens with new capital build is you have to go through a process of a site search to make sure that you're getting best value for public money and indeed finding the most appropriate place for that. Because essentially these will therefore be on site, the timescale between announcement uh, and ultimately completion tends to be a shorter period than would be there for major capital announcement. So, and I think in the past what we have seen, and I mentioned about uh, the... The fact that I think of the initial tranche, we're now, I think, 47 out of 50 are, are more or less completed on that basis. Again, for all of us, I'm sure there's always a frustration about how quickly these things are turned around. But certainly we will be making sure that, that this happens as soon as, as can be practical for each of those individual schools. Uh, thank you, Minister. I call Rosemary Barton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Minister Weir, can I also congratulate you on your appointment as Minister of Education? Um, can, I also, can I welcome, I welcome the school enhancement programme where 18 extra schools have been added to the list and the capital investment of 45 million that is going into them. However, and particularly, I'm pleased to see Irvinstown Primary School from Fermanagh South thrown on it. So that should give them a boost. However, can you confirm that this money is now available and ring-fenced for this purpose immediately? Don't forget the expenditure. I mean, first of all, again, I, without this sounding a little bit like a loving of former education spokespersons, because I know I think you're the, uh, the fourth uh, member of the uh, spokesperson for the, the parties to uh, be able to speak. I, again, sort of uh, look forward to working with yourself. Uh, the money is available. 
Because it's a capital bill, there is a flow of projects. The Department is confident the money is, is there. Uh, because the money will, in that sense, most of it will not be spent absolutely immediately. It won't occur probably within this financial year on that basis. But there is confidence that that, that money, unless there is some radical change of direction from the, um, the executive to suddenly to cut all programmes of some nature, uh, there is confidence that the money is there. It's not dependent upon additional resources, for example, from the British government. Um, and there has been a, a long tradition on a number of calls with the SEP, so uh, people can take that the announcement of these 18 schools will happen. To call on Michelle Magaldine, please. From the outset, I'd like to declare that I am a, a governor of Kalinchi Primary School, and I've obviously met EA on a number of the impor of important issues in relation to the school. I am delighted that both Kalinchi Primary School and Glastry College are um, going to benefit from the Minister's announcement here today. Would the Minister be in a position to give details of the anticipated work which is to be carried out, um, the amount of money to be allocated, and the likely timescales for delivery for both of those schools? I thank the member. I know obviously she has been very proactive, um, particularly on behalf of Clinchy uh, Primary, in pressing the case for it. I, I would highlight a couple of things. First of all, I think the money available uh, in each case will be up to four million. It's probably somewhere in the region, likely to be in the region of uh, around about three to four million each. Uh, in terms of the detail of what, what will happen, I think it's important because I suspect this will uh, be raised by a number of, of members. The next steps in terms of the, the process will be then. Uh, that there will be then work going on between the department and the individual schools to work up the, the project. Um, in terms of that, this will mean that for the 18 schools, all 18 have been approved, all will receive their SEP. The detail of what they specifically get may alter as a result of those discussions. And on some occasions in the past, that can also be of an additional positivity. Sometimes that could be a certain level of substitution of what has been provided because it may be found, for example, that uh, a school, uh, the, the top priority actually is getting ensuring that it's got safe wiring or something of that nature. It can also be the case that sometimes within the envelope of money that's available, if it's then found that the, the project can be delivered at a, um, uh, at a rate below what is, uh, there may be some additional money that can be available at times. On the specifics of the two bits, uh, so therefore, the remarks I make about, about what is proposed in relation to it, will reflect these are what the asks of the school, not necessarily what the end result will be. Last year, I think I've highlighted the uh, issue of additional accommodation uh, to bring it up to the schedule of accommodation. So, uh, for example, there are a number of units within it that are currently undersized. There is a lack of availability, for instance, of a sports hall. So that will be formed part of the discussions, particularly as regards Glastry. Uh, for Kalinchi, again, it's uh, accommodation issues issues around size, and I know there's been a particular issue around traffic management with the school, which I think will be a, a level of priority as well. I think those reflect the asks of the school. There will then be a, an iteration of discussion around those projects with the individual schools. So I think that's an important caveat to, to make clear to people. But the fact it will mean that all these schools will receive a school enhancement programme. Thank you. And a call on Gemma Dolan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I thank the Minister for his statement and in particular I welcome his inclusion of Irvinstown Primary School in the School Enhancement Project. Will the Minister ensure the next stage is delivered as soon as possible? Thank you. Yeah, there will be no uh, delay in, in relation to that, um, in connection with that. We will, and again, there's been, I think it's fair comment to say there's always been good work between the Department on the SEP project and it has been one of the more, uh, and I appreciate I think the former Minister uh, O'Dowd was actually the person who originally uh, announced this. Um, and I think that as part of that, there has been a, a good working relationship between schools, between contractors uh, and the department in helping to deliver this. So certainly there will be no undue delays. And as I said, because of some of the restrictions that don't apply to the school enhancement programme, as opposed to a much larger capital pro, uh, particular build, which might involve a 20 or 30 million pound project, uh, Schools are not simply refurbished or new classrooms overnight, but it is something which actually in terms of the time skills are a lot better than other capital projects. So certainly there will not be any levels of delay. No. Okay, thank you. And I'll call Gordon Don. And I too congratulate uh, Minister Weir on his re-election. 
and uh, I'm delighted that he has um, included three schools within the North Down area, and I'm, I must congratulate him on remembering his roots and where he came from, and, uh, and no doubt it probably did not influence him in the decision. But can, can the Minister um, indicate and how we justify the school enhancement programme against a new build for the specific buildings? And is the public getting value for money, or is this just a short-term exercise which is putting off the, the dreaded day when we need new buildings in a lot of these areas rather than just a, a short-term fix? Well, is a, a, um, a cocktail of um, capital projects. Uh, I think that the issue, I think it, it's important that in terms of the um, capital money that is available, that we ensure that there's a steady spend of that money to be able to deliver for people. Um, as such, yes, it does, I believe, deliver value for money. If we were in a situation that, for example, school enhancement programmes were simply in place of there ever being any capital, uh, major capital build, I think that would be the wrong approach. But similarly, if we simply concentrated on new capital builds, you'd have a limited number of projects, and this is an opportunity to be able to deliver that. It's also the case that while in some cases, and I'm sure even some of the schools that, that applied uh, would in an ideal world like a new, entirely new capital build, um, it is also the case that on a case-by-case -case basis that not all schools will require a new capital build. Sometimes as well, it is also the case that it is less about the... Um, the fabric of the existing building, but may well be a lack of particular facilities. So it may mean that, that while the school building itself is, is very good, there may be a lack of a sports hall. Or while provision of, for example, say, subject matters in English and history may be, may be fine, um, the level of, of, um, uh, of science lab uh, may be sort of um, needed, to be, needed to be looked at or whatever. Okay, thank you. I'll call Emma Sheeran. Gormagat Kankorlia, August Kugarjis Lapt, Air the Rule Nua. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I just want to congratulate you on your new role. I also want to thank the Minister and congratulate you on your new role. I, like others around this chamber, uh, want to welcome this statement, particularly in relation to St. Pat's College in Mahara, which is in my own constituency of Mid Ulster. Uh, my party has met with Mrs. Musson and the team there on several occasions, and I can attest to the urgent need for, for this capital investment. On her behalf, I would like to ask the Minister if he could provide an indication of the timescale of this project and when like, work is likely to begin. In terms of the, uh, the project, first of all, I mean, I, I think I had, I seem to remember on, on previous posts, had the opportunity to visit uh, St. Pat's, although it, it's now, there's that many schools have either been visited or not visited, and I'm sure former ministers can also refer to this. You're trying to work out whether well, there's a slight false memory in relation to that. In terms of timescales, um, yes, across the board, I, I it's, can't give specific commitments to individual ones, but... The intention would be then that, that work would be able to begin in uh, the year 22-23 and the general rule of thumb for school enhancement programme would be about an 18-month uh, project so the idea would be that those could be completed within that period. So whereas the most major capital bills sometimes even when they're announced maybe five or even close to ten years before there's completion there can be much greater turnaround I think we would aim to have these completed in 24-25 so, you know, we're talking, we are still talking about a few years away, and, but that will be slightly sort of uh, moving scale in terms of, in terms of, in terms of time scale, but we hope to get these progressed really as quickly as possible. Thank you, and I call Dolores Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I join with others in congratulating uh, Minister Weir on his appointment as Education Minister, and I welcome uh, the uh, inclusion of Carrick Primary School from my own constituency. And the Minister may know that whilst it's not a fully uh, formal integrated school, it actually has a school population which broadly reflects the wider community in which it's geographically placed, which is very, very welcome. But Minister, in your statement, you also refer to investment and maintenance works, both capital and minor. I wonder, had you even at this early stage any sense of how much that might be and would you uh, give any thought to looking at the process by which school principals can uh, uh, requisition some minor works which does seem to be unduly cumbersome, bureaucratic and costly? Well, broadly speaking the, the overall capital investment will be as I said a mix of new 
new build, maintenance and SEP. I think there's still some thought and decision to be taken about what the precise nature of that, that mix is. Uh, look, I think the member makes a very good point in terms of issues around autonomy, particularly around procurement. Uh, I think that's one of the areas that we will want to look at to ensure that uh, there's always the balance by trying to ensure that we get the maximum value for public money, but by the same token then that we don't necessarily micromanage. And I think that there is a, a strong case. Uh, I think that um, it is also the case in looking ahead uh, on that issue, it is about giving people opportunities uh, for levels of autonomy. Because previously, I think whenever uh, I was minister, we'd put out a, a fairly open questionnaire on the issue of autonomy to schools. And there is, even from schools in very similar positions, sometimes a very mixed opinion, because some schools will take a view of, well, actually, they don't want any additional burden, and effectively, could somebody else not just sort that that's out for them, uh, whereas other schools are much more keener to embrace. So I think it's about trying to work out a system where we can give, within the, the context of, um, as I said, value for money, uh, that level of opportunities for uh, autonomy in a very sensible way. And I think that clearly involves the levels of procurement and maintenance. Okay, thank you. And I call Roy Beggs. I too would wish to congratulate the Minister on his, uh, his appointment and wish him well. But there are huge pressures on school budgets. And this is particularly the case where there has, there has been uh, school amalgamations and schools continue to operate on multiple sites. So looking at the Minister's statements, He's indicated some 59 schools over a three-year period have benefited from £145 million. So could the Minister advise how this, along with the new, the new build programme, prioritises and encourages school amalgamations, which can bring about improvements to educational outcomes to our children and young people, and also bring about savings for the department? And at the same time, Minister, can you give me an update on the progress in the redevelopment of Island McGee Primary School, which has already taken over a decade? Okay, I'll be happy. To, uh, first of all, on the last point, obviously, I don't have direct details here in connection with Island McGee, but I'll be happy to write to the member on that. Uh, I don't know whether he was briefly excited when he saw the announcement because it, there was reference to Carrick Primary School, and of course, that's in, in Lurgan uh, on that basis, but not within the, the member's constituency. Uh, in terms of the member makes a very, very good point in terms of the, the broader um, rationalisation of the school estate and indeed where we have, for instance, mergers. And I think one of the issues in connection with that, I think, which we'll be looking in terms of transformation side of it, quite often a merger can lead to a, a better longer term solution. But members will also be aware that quite often when a merger, and particularly where there's a split site, uh, can create particularly a lot of upfront costs. So I think we need to look particularly from a transformation point of view in connection with that. Can I say, um, I suppose, in terms of it playing uh, a role within the decision-making process, mention was made, I think, that these were decided on the existing protocol. As part of that protocol, um, there are a range of priorities that are built into that. Uh, amongst those will be um, the enhancement works that are essential to affect rationalisation projects, so as part of, if you like, a wider uh, area plan. Uh, and indeed, there's also, I think, where it is, um, uh, where there are, for instance, split sites to ensure that, that, that actually things can be brought together can also be part of that. So uh, we're looking at sort of where there's unmet needs, where there's significant substandard accommodation. I think what we need to ensure, and I think this has been happening by the department, but ensure that uh, as we move ahead, for instance, on area planning, that there's uh, particularly in terms of major capital works, that, that we have an alignment that, that, if you like, that there's a that it's in step with the wider position of trying to ensure that we get a, the best overall uh, layout of of, uh, of schools as part of the, the overall position. Okay, thank you. I'll call Trevor Clark. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and like others, can I welcome the minister to and in recent his appointment and indeed his statement here today. Um, Mention, uh, Minister, in terms of the 18 schools, in terms of the school enhancement, and I, obviously I would welcome uh, the investment in Riverside, where I had the opportunity to go in June last year, where much of the investment would be required. 
However, and I appreciate Mr. the statement is relatively short today, um, and you won't have the detail possibly with you today if you get uh, right to me in relation to further detail on what Riverside is to receive, because given that it is a special school and the nature of that school, it is a very difficult location and the, a very cramped location. So if I could ask the Minister if he could get us more detail in relation to what that is. And also, can I say when I'm on the feet, as others have used the opportunity in a parochial manner to discuss Crumlin Integrate it and extend an invitation to the Minister to Crumlin, um, where they're coming under difficulty from the Education Authority currently. And it's a school currently that's uh, there's over a thousand uh, pupils leaving Crumlin daily to go to other schools. And we would like to see the long-term viability of Crumlin sustained. Certainly, uh, in relation to that, I mean, first of all, we'd be happy to correspond with the, the member in terms of uh, Riverside. Again, in terms of uh, other invitations, I'll be happy to try to accommodate. I, I fear um, that we may have to sort of speak to the people of the technology to, to clone Dolly the sheep, because they may need to be in several places at several times uh, in connection with school visits. But certainly, we will take every offer and try and accommodate as much as possible in terms of the, the school visits. And I appreciate that there will be a range of schools that some of which put in for this particular uh, school enhancement program, others that didn't. Um, the, uh, the opportunity as such will be taken to, uh, there will be other opportunities for other schools as well as part of that. Okay. Thank you, and I call Sinead Annis. Good, uh, <clears throat> can call your, uh, I too welcome the announcement today of funding for the schools that have, have been listed. But, um, it would be remiss of me, and I think conspicuous by its absence, or uh, one, one school in particular of my own constituency of South Down, which is St Louis Grammar in Kilkeel, um, a school that is in dire need of capital investment, major capital investment, and I too extend an invitation to the, to the Minister to pay, to pay a visit to St Louis to see uh, the situation there uh, at the campus. Um, you allude in your statement um, that you intend to continue the advancement of the, the programme of major capital bills. Can I ask the Minister when will he announce the next tranche of funding for a capital projects so that schools like St Louis, uh, Inkelkeel and the Lower Moor there can actually avail of that, get their business case in order and, uh, and, and avail of the next tranche of funding? From that point of view, I suppose there's, there's a couple of issues, because uh, I appreciate also that there will be schools that will have, as indicated, I think, mentioned, I think possibly 165 schools initially put in, so we've seen tranches uh, happening. First of all, I, I think the, the current prioritised list is due to expire in May, but I'll give consideration as to whether or not there should be a further tranche of SEPs uh, announced by then, or whether we look to sort of a, a new call as part of that. Mention of obviously made of, of minor capital works. I, I would hope that in terms of prioritising potential projects for major capital works to make an announcement in the coming months um, in relation to that. I think it's also the case that because we have effectively uh, these categories, um, clearly, if you like, there's a ceiling of, and the way they are sort of subcategorised, there's a ceiling of four million um, on uh, an SEP. Uh, sometimes there will then be. And clearly, for example, if there is either by way of a major new build that would be above that, uh, it may be that for the city school may feel that it is not appropriate to put in for that particular bit, that they may look simply towards, towards capital. So it's, it's, it's a certain amount of horses for courses on that, on that basis. Uh, although there is also the case that a school can put in for both a school enhancement programme and can also apply for major... <coughs> Uh, a major capital works as, as well. So all those will be assessed, and we hope within the, the coming months that we can actually move on major capital projects, but it will be a completely open process where people then can apply um, on that basis. Before I call the next speaker, could I just remind members that there are quite a number of speakers due to speak and requesting to speak, and we won't go through them at this rate, so I'm just letting people know that I could try and keep their remarks as briefly as possibly can do. Thank you. So I'll call on Kelly Armstrong. Mr Speaker, I will try to be brief. Um, thank the Minister very much um, for telling the public that we actually have money that can be spent on our schools that are in crisis and welcome him, of course, back into his ministry. Um, I'm delighted that there are a number of schools that are in our constituency, such as Kalinchia and Glastry. Much needed work needs to be done there. Um, but the Minister talks about this immediate impact, and I know it could take a bit of time for this to happen, but um, we need to think also towards the long-term delivery of investment. All this needs to be fed into the written branch review of education that we have agreed on in the New Deal document. Um, so what I want to ask is, how will the Minister do that to ensure that that's fed through? How many schools that have already applied um, and had it been awarded money, probably under the permanent secretary, are yet to receive funding. And if you could, at some stage, publish the funding that each school re receives. Thank well, you. Uh, 
suppose taking each of those in, in turn. In terms of the, the, the wider picture, obviously there's, in terms of any um, examination of reform, it will have to be of a holistic nature. There's no point in different aspects of that going in, in sort of a silo route. And so consequently, anything, for instance, looked at, um, and while a lot of this will probably focus on educational structures, on resource finances, the capital then has got to, to marry in with that. Uh, in terms of the uh, issue of the, where the state of play is with each of the existing ones, obviously I made reference to the, the um, earlier sort of provision, and I'm sure an update can be provided on where each of the individual schools in, in earlier tranches, I think uh, that can be, uh, perhaps we can produce that and uh, lay that within the assembly library. Uh, in terms of the individual amounts, uh, we're still at a stage where the detail of that, there will be a certain amount of work that will go on because, again, part of that is a, going to be a certain level of ongoing discussion in terms of the project with the schools. So I'm conscious of the fact that, that uh, if we were saying here's a very definitive amount for each school, that may end up giving a false impression. It may underestimate sometimes what, what money will be. The only thing I would say for absolute certainty uh, is that uh, all school housing projects will be between half a million and, and four million. As members can suggest, that the fact that we were talking about a tranche of money of 45 million across 18 schools, uh -huh. it will tend to be on the higher side of, of that in general. Uh, but obviously, as individual details become available uh, and agreed, that will then become transparent um, between the department and the schools. Thank you. And I call Kiva Archibald. And like others, can I congratulate the Minister on his appointment to his position and um, also welcome today's announcement. Um, just in relation to an answer to a previous question about um, new transfers of funding um, for capital programmes, schools in need of capital, um, major capital investment may be inclined and understandably so to apply under the schools enhancement programme. Um, would this have any impact on an application for major capital works? In terms of the, the situation of certainly no, scar, no school is, is barred uh, from applying uh, for both and indeed even if there's a school enhancement program that also doesn't automatically rule them out. Obviously in terms of the broader capital, uh, capital works there are a range of factors which are built into any protocol, one of which will clearly be the, uh, the physical state of the buildings, the level of facilities that are there. So I suppose to some extent the, the, there's always some level of impact because it may mean that any scoring mechanism, for instance, on the physical state of any, uh, maybe, just checking that that is correct, or maybe, uh, maybe not, just give me a moment here. There will be a, sorry, there, there is ultimately uh, a situation that if a school has been approved for an SEP, it was likely to lead to a period of time in which they wouldn't be eligible. Uh, I think normally, the normal rule of thumb is I think a seven year period in, in relation to that. And obviously again, in terms of the wider context, people will look at, as I said, that's not to say schools can't apply for both, but clearly if they're successful, to some extent, there will be a, a certain amount where schools will have to take a little bit of a strategic decision themselves in terms of, um, you know, sometimes what they feel to be best. Sometimes that will be obvious because a school may not be necessarily looking for a complete new build. It may be looking and feeling, well, actually, we feel that we do need additional classrooms or we need uh, within that, because one of the other, I suppose, drawbacks, sometimes can be an advantage, but drawbacks for a school if it's looking at a complete capital build is that it will look to, uh, there will be a, a site search, so it may not by any means necessarily end up where it is at present. Uh, I suppose the SEP is given assurance that, that the work can carry on and that indeed the school will remain uh, at, its, at its current location, which also gives a certain level of certainty for the way ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, call Pat Cadney. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Minister, I, I wish to, like everyone else here, wish you the best of luck in your portfolio as the Education Minister and uh, every success in that going forward. Um, I uh, wish to thank the officials uh, that have been meeting with me over the uh, one school that was here today, St John the Baptist. It borders on my constituency, but I was asked by parents when I go in and meet with the Board of Governors and with the, um, with, with the school. And I am delighted that this is now being 
put forward as a school enhancement project. Little St John the Baptist has half of its school closed. And Minister, I don't want to infringe on your time, but if at all possible, you will see what that will do and how it will transform that whole area. With that school being closed down and with the vandalism and what our children have to try and to go there, my question is, in the enveloping of that school, can we try to, I know you, your officials will try to keep it to as minimum a time and as minimum a, of disruption as possible. Certainly, I mean, first of all, I would pay tribute, I think, to the, the member. I know he's been particularly assiduous in um, raising the case as regards to John, John the Baptist. Uh, and I think that a lot of the work as regards to school, I would pay credit to him. Uh, I should also highlight, I think, given the appointment of the new principal, St John the Baptist, not just given this so we get a favourable response from a social media commentator. Uh, but what I would say, I hope the, the, like the, uh, the original St John the Baptist, this is the forerunner of, of better things as well. Certainly as regards, uh, and I am sure the member will be assiduous in ensuring that the envelope is pushed out as much as possible uh, in connection with this. Again, it is about the aim is to try to deliver these as quickly as we possibly can uh, on that basis. There will be no undue delay, but obviously we want to have, from the department's point of view, uh, a clear level of discussion uh, with, the, with the school on the exact details then of, of what will be provided. Okay, thank you. Can I call Orlea Flynn? Can call you and can I also send my congratulations to Mr Weir on your appointment as Minister for the Department of Education. Um, I welcome the statement from the Minister today, particularly in relation to the investment that's coming into St Cairns and St John the Baptist Schools in West Belfast. Um, I'd also like to thank the, the Speaker of the House, as I know he was involved in, in some of that work with St John Baptist School um, locally. So my question is, can the Minister please outline um, when the work to these two schools um, will commence, please? Well, as, as indicated um, earlier, we have an overall timescale. We don't have the detail because that will, some of that will involve um, the wider discussions between that. We're hoping that in terms of the school enhancement programme that the uh, people will be on site in 22-23 and that indeed the, the normal time scale was roughly about 18 months. There, there can be a fairly quick turnaround in terms of construction with SEP compared within that. And I think, again, one of the advantages is, again, depending upon the exact nature of the work that's being done, in the vast majority of cases, it should mean that there isn't any particular levels of dislocation. Um, you know, I can't give a guarantee that in every school there may need to be some temporary relocation, but the fact that it's on site, the fact that it will be part of the school should mean that we can minimise the level of disruption uh, for any of the schools. And again, I look forward to new facilities, both at St John's and St Cairns. I, I, I'm looking forward to the refreshing bit of maybe somebody getting up and welcoming a, a school outside their own constituency. I suppose to be fair, uh, Pat Catney, to be fair to him, as, was, as a member for Lagan Valley, did break that taboo and, and uh, welcomed the school in, in West Belfast. Uh, so he should perhaps get a, a special speaker's prize as a result of uh, today. <laughs> I'll consider that in due course. Okay, I'm going to call Meg Nesbitt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I join the chorus of congratulations to Mr. Weir on his reappointment as minister. He has given uh, some detail of the plan for Glastry College, the likely timescales, uh, and the correlation between receiving uh, school enhancement programme money and being granted money for a new build. Uh, on that basis, can I ask uh, whether Glastry is still in line for a new build? and declaring an interest as chair of the board of Movilla, if there are any implications in today's announcement for area planning in Ards and North Down. I, these are taken, first of all, in relation to that. Yes, I've, I've highlighted, if you like, the, the timescale. Obviously, again, I would make the case, and I'm, I'm not making any particular assumptions in relation to the two schools that, that have been particularly mentioned. Uh, what I've highlighted in terms of the uh, particular details of the project is on the basis of referring to what the school put in in its application and indeed what the asks were. Uh, in most cases, that will be then reflected precisely in the, the school enhancement programme, but there will be some occasions because it's on the basis of what the needs of the school uh, would be. Uh, from the point of view, um, obviously, as mentioned, the normal process where there is a school enhancement programme, there will be maybe a bar on, uh, on an application, successful application for new build. But we will want to look at everything in the wider context of area planning. In terms of Movilla, uh, again, uh, there will be a wider context will need to be looked at in terms of, of area planning, and we will be coming back to that at a, a later stage uh, in connection with that. Uh, 
obviously, if there's a development proposal that comes forward, there, there will need to be a reassessment just to make sure that, that is fit for purpose. And again, sometimes, as I said, what a school says it wants may not necessarily be the absolute priority of what, what mm -hmm. it needs. And sometimes that can even be found whenever the project is actually underway, that sometimes priorities will also change a little bit. Thank you. And I call Carl Nikillen. And also congratulate the Minister for Education. I am going to congratulate him on investment in Clevenville Controlled Primary School in North Belfast, the integrated school. It's very much welcomed. The Minister mentioned earlier, I think it was in relation to an answer to Dolores Kelly around procurement. I would like to see strengthening procurement procedures where it isn't um, a case where if you go through the CPD route, that you spent more money replacing your minor works and fixtures that if you, you, you done it independently. And I would ask the Minister, through <coughs> enhanced procedures with CPD, SIB and others, that he bring something forward, because it is significant money that's been invested in welcomed money. But, uh, but it's certainly the procurement up until now needs to be tightened up and it needs to be more cost effective and certainly more inclusive of social clauses and social benefits as well. Yeah, I, I take the point that the, the members make, and obviously sometimes as regards to the wider issue of procurement, it will be something which lies outside largely the remit of my department. I know particularly um, in terms of CPD, it, it, it tends to be as it largely lies within the Department of Finance. So there's, there's, you know, we've got to ensure across public, but I think we've got to be careful that we don't talk across purposes. There's clearly got to be, for any major levels of, of procurement, very clear-cut um, regulations, very clear-cut uh, procedures that are there. I suppose where there can be a level of annoyance, and again where we need to, to look at this from the point of view of schools, where schools are seeing something that's a very minor thing to do, and they see at times a long lead-in time, potentially uh, a situation in which they see what seems to be relatively minor work then seeming to cost a large amount of money. So it's about, it's about getting that level of balance probably at, at the lower level. Obviously, I think from what the member said, particularly in terms of if we're looking at major areas of procurement, that's something that is something that should be uh, universal throughout government and try to ensure there's a level playing field in connection with that. Okay, thank you. I call Paula Bradshaw. Okay, th thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I um, echo the congratulations to um, Mr. Weir and, and his appointment, and also congratulate my colleague Chris Little, who's taken over as chair of the education. Um, I, was, I was delighted today to see uh, Botanic Primary School and Victoria College included in, in that list. Very conscious that Victoria College is one of um, a, a large number of um, post-primary schools in my constituency that. Ha have the, have the capacity, if given additional funding for works like this, to take on more um, pupils. Um, in the last academic year, there were 200 pupils who weren't allocated their first choice, and at the end of the day, there were seven who didn't get a point, um, allocated a place at all. You mentioned, Minister, about um, the protocol and the, the principal criteria under it in terms of um, amalgamation and split sites. And I'm just wondering if you're minded to change the protocol to reflect where there are pressures, um, such as I've outlined there, to allow for more pupils to be taken on. Thank you. Well, as regards obviously the protocol mentioned in terms of split sites, um, I think the fact that Victoria College in particular is operating on split sites is one of the factors which obviously was a part of the determinant in. Uh, reaching out. I think if, if it helps, if you like, uh, create a more sustainable school um, estate, I think is, is, is preferable in relation to that. Uh, you know, there will need to be, I think, as we look at the broader area of school numbers to ensure that we get the right processes there, particularly for development proposals. I, I'll not, uh, the member may appreciate that in terms of commenting on an individual case, that wouldn't be something, I, I appreciate that, that more generally. Uh, obviously, we, we've got to ensure that the um, the situation with regard to development rules are fit for purpose. And sometimes that means that we look at things uh, and maybe see where there can be some easier wins. In some cases, there's been a situation where, and again, I know the department's been proactive on this, that on the converse, there will be some schools that have had an artificial enrolment number, which actually doesn't reflect uh, the reality of the situation. Maybe some decision that was taken in the 70s and 80s. So there has been, I think, accommodation in terms of downsizing. Clearly, with the, any individual proposal, um, we look at the overall system. In relation, I think that's got to feed in, will be part as well of the wider review, because I think that, that how we manage that and the processes, I think, play into area planning. Obviously, regards individual applications, 
Um, I'm under a legal duty then to determine each of those on the merits of that, that case, so I'll not comment on the individual, uh, which I, I assume the member wouldn't expect me to anyway. Okay, thank you. I call Daniel McCrossan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I welcome you to your new role and also welcome the Minister back into his role. And Minister, may I first of all thank you for a job you did three years ago, just prior to the collapse of these institutions at Clockhor School, and you kindly accepted my request to visit, and those works have taken place. So I would like to put on record my thanks to you and also put on record my appreciation to Derek Baker, who has done a tremendous job in a very challenging situation over the last few years in the Department of Education. Uh, Minister, just to uh, draw on so there's many points that have been made in relation to uh, monies awarded to schools. Uh, my, mine is focused on Strabane Primary School. Uh, it, again, it's a former school of mine. I attended it 20 short years ago. Uh, and uh, since then, it hasn't changed very much uh, whatsoever. Uh, and it was in line for a new school minister. And, and uh, I know that there was hopes that that would be the case. And I'm wondering, Minister, uh, will that still be the case, uh, dependent on the level of grant that's given to, or funding that's given to the school, or will this simply replace uh, that proposal that was originally made? And also, just before I finish, the former principal retired this year. He gave 38 years uh, of his life to uh, the children in Strabane, uh, Mr. David Canning, and he was the principal of that school for 26 years. So I'd like to put on record my appreciation to him as well. Thank you. No, and I think uh, I would. Echo a couple of points that the member has made. I mean, first of all, I think it is right that we do pay tribute to some of our retiring teachers and principals, many of whom have spent perhaps decades at particular schools, have seen perhaps generations of children uh, go through that. Uh, I would also, I think, echo, and it would be remiss of me not to say that, uh, you know, without getting into the recriminations of the last three years, um, the fact that despite the limitations that have been placed upon them, there's been a lot of good work put in by officials from all departments. Um, in relation to trying to ensure that as much progress is made as, as possible. I too can remember the, um, the visit to West Tyrone. I think it, it was a little bit of a Storm Brendan type situation because I remember we, were, uh, we might have had to uh, almost sort of borrow the, um, uh, the leader of the All Students Party's former submarine to get back that, that day. Such, so heavy was the, the waters on that particular occasion. Um, can I say, no, a, an indication of that, as, as indicated, if there's been a successful SEP, the general rule is that it will prevent for a period of time uh, a, a complete new build. However, there can be the opportunity to effectively um, obtain that via the other, the other route. And I think, obviously, in Straban's case, a lot of the uh, focus will be on issues around new classrooms and, indeed, extension of that. And hopefully, then, there'll be... I, I hope to be back in the members' constituency visiting schools, hopefully in but drier circumstances. Okay, thank you, and I call Sean Lynch. Can I call you? And I welcome Minister's statement and wish him well in the post. I am somewhat disappointed that there are no Gale school on, a, on the list. It may be that none applied. I understand there will be other opportunities for schools to apply, and I hope that the Minister will be inclusive of all sectors, including the Irish language sector. Gormilla. Look, it's, from that point of view, I don't know uh, all indications where I think 165 schools applied. In some cases, uh, as indicated, a range of schools. I mean, it's undoubtedly the case, uh, and again, others can bear this out, that if you are visiting schools around the country, I'm sure there's a lot more schools would feel that they would be in a position that um, they would benefit from either a new build or an SEP. In some cases, that decision will have been taken by the school as to which route they see is the more appropriate in connection with that. The criteria are entirely objective uh, within that. Uh, schools are scored around those, those criteria and then, if you like, ranked according to the list. The only subdivision uh, is not between any form of sectors, but between primary, to get a mix of primary, post-primary, and uh, some indication of special needs schools. So, quite frankly, irrespective of the sector that any school applies from, uh, they're scored entirely by officials entirely on the basis of those objective uh, criteria, and that will continue to be the case. Thank you. And I call uh, Phil McGuigan. Uh, and can I congratulate uh, you on your appointment 
uh, to Minister of Education. And just to alert you to the fact that I have sent you an email uh, uh, requesting an urgent meeting about a proposed school closure of Barnish Primary School in my constituency, and I hope you look on that, that request favourably. Can I welcome uh, your statement uh, here this, this, uh, this morning and the investment of £45 million into our, our schools estate? In particular, can I welcome the investment in St Louis Grammar School in Ballymena, my own constituency? I was just checking over it. Uh, I did a meeting with uh, the Permanent Secretary and, and Department officials at the beginning of 2018 uh, about the much-needed work at St Louis uh, and much need of a new canteen, outdoor sports facilities, repairs of uh, windows and doors throughout the school. Uh, and can I ask the Minister if he can confirm that this is the work that will be uh, allocated to St Louis and also if he could confirm when the school will uh, get the full allocation of the money uh, given to it? Well, as indicated, as with all the proposals, uh, there is an overall timescale for the SEP, so I, I can't go into the individual school in terms of um, their time, because, again, that will slightly vary depending upon the discussions. Uh, again, in terms of what the requests were, it is highlighted in a very similar manner to what the, the member asked for in terms of canteen, in terms of, uh, I think, sort of some replacement in terms of windows and security, and also looking at, at uh, in terms of sports facilities as well. So those are the, the requests, and we're working uh, with them on that. I, I must just make a slightly reminded to think of the, the phrase that, uh, and I appreciate the, the work that the member's done, that, uh, that uh, victory has, has a thousand parents and defeat is an orphan. So uh, there's a lot of um, good work being put in by a range of members uh, across the, the spectrum on a range of, of these. Specifically, obviously, as regards you mentioned about the potential school closure, I will take advice in terms of I um, don't know what stage that, that is at. Uh, and the member will appreciate that, that legally there are periods where uh, a minister, in terms of a development proposal, uh, can sort of meet and take listen to submissions, hear advice, it's because the Minister will be, and in the absence of the Minister of the Department, will be taking a final decision, they can, they can comment on that. There will also be a period where the Minister is prevented from having that, that meeting, so I will need to look at that individual case, uh, you know, depending on where it is within the process. Thank you. And a call from a con. I'll get uh, a con call you, and I would like to congratulate, congratulate yourself on your elevation to the post of Speaker and also the, 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 the Minister on his reappointment uh, to, to the post, and I look forward uh, to a meeting at the earliest possible convenience to discuss some concerns that I have in the input. And in relation to the statement, I think it's, it's, it's very welcome, especially in, in, in terms of St Paul's Primary School in, in Maca Drive. And, in its own way, it's a unique school. Over 25 per cent of the pupils come from the rich culture and ethnic backgrounds that, that exist within the area, and it enhances everybody's education within the area. Uh, 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 but what I would ask is, and I know that you have been pressed here this morning uh, to give timelines and dates and things, but is it possible that the Minister could ask whoever in the Department, if they could correspond with me, uh, a timeline uh, for work to begin in, in, in that school? Well, I think obviously we will be responding, and again, um, thank the member for his, his, his question. Uh, Member will know obviously the constraints of finances. A former member of the, the old DFP committee uh, that he was on in, in connection with that. In terms of obviously the initial level of correspondence and direct contact will be between the department and the schools. Uh, obviously, I think there will be a need to keep the wider community sort of involved with that. I had the opportunity I remember in visiting St Paul's because it is, um, as you say, sort of a particular um, significant mix of, of, of people, which I think works very well within the within the school. Uh, and obviously, as part of that, we we'll want to make sure that that can progress. Uh, the scheme at St Paul's, as with others, can progress as, as soon as possible. But obviously, as well, if the members uh, will be able to respond to any correspondence the member uh, gives us. Okay, thank you. And I call Patty McGlone. Um, I guess um, Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. And I first of all would congratulate the minister. Uh, on his appointment to this department. Um, I have no doubt he will perform his duties as, as assiduously as before, so I congratulate him on that. Um, in relation to uh, St Patrick's College Mahara, I have been in regular contact with the school, had visits, and indeed I would like to commend your officials who did take the time to come out and meet with the school principal and chair of the Board of Governors and uh, Councillor Martin Kearney on site 
to see the actualities of the school itself. So, um, I would, if you could convey that, thanks on to the officials for their time and commitment, please, Minister. Um, uh, we have heard uh, some degree of detail around the commencement date, but if I could, and perhaps you would uh, wish to, to write me about uh, this, Minister, if you could provide me with details of the works which have now been approved for it and the level of financial commitment to those works as well, please. So I'd be happy to correspond with the, the member. Um, as indicated earlier, uh, this has been, if you like, stage one. It's, it's the, the approval, but the next stage then is a scoping out of the project between the department and the, the school. So the exact amount, and even, even once, once work starts, there can be a degree of variation on, on that. Uh, I think that once that project work has been done in terms of sc uh, that scoping exercise, we're in a better position then to provide a little bit of meat on the bone over directly what will be done and what it's likely to, to cause. I, I seem to remember, I think, visiting St. Patrick College possibly with the member previously um, in relation to it. And in part, that was an opportunity to, to see the particular uh, state of the buildings that were there. And it's good, therefore, that we're seeing sort of in terms of some of the provisions a, a good news story as regards St. Pat's. Okay. Thank you. On the call, Rachel Woods. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I wish to extend my welcome to this announcement today by the Minister and also welcome him back to the Post. I'm um, certainly glad to see three schools in North Down area to be included in this scheme as, a well, as well as across the board. And it was, as previous speakers have said, we do have much to do in terms of addressing the education issues we face here. I certainly hope to work alongside the Minister, especially to address the backlog of minor works, which are much needed across the estate and, as the Minister will know, have continued to pile up. I would like to ask if the proposed advancement of minor works will address the, the current backlog of projects first and how much would be made available through this. Well, again, it's part of the, and again, welcome, I think I'm, I'm right in saying perhaps the, uh, the members of former pupil, possibly of Sullivan Upper, uh, and therefore I would be particularly delighted to see her old school uh, getting um, advantage of this. Uh, what I would say, yes, in terms of the, the minor works, some of that will also then be dependent upon what budget is available. And there's a decision also to be taken, uh, because it's, 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 to some extent there are three areas. There are the school enhancement programme, there's the major capital bill, and there's minor works. And so there's a wee bit of thought to be given as to what the right concoction between the three uh, would be. It's undoubtedly the case in terms of overall capital works, um, including minor works, that the budget itself, while it's very welcome to see um, actions being taken, it may be less pressed than the resource budget, but again could be spent two or three times over, at least in that, in that regard. But certainly I think we'll be coming back to try and ensure that the, there is that right mix between all those elements. Okay, uh, thank you. I'll call Jim Allister. Um, can I express my disappointment at the neglect of the controlled sector in North Antrim? and indeed in the entirety of County Antrim. It seems there hasn't been any controlled school in the entirety of County Antrim found worthy of these improvements. What a contrast for County Down uh, and the Minister's own constituency, past and present, where uh, four such schools uh, are to be uh, advanced. Uh, is there a particular reason why County Antrim is being ignored, and since there's been, well, since there's been 165 applicants, and still over 100 schools waiting, will the minister publish the list of those who are still waiting for inclusion in this scheme? Uh, finally, could I join with Mrs. Kelly in urging upon the minister speedy action to restore autonomy to individual schools? on minor works. It is preposterous that when you have a broken window, a broken door, you have to go on, you, you can't simply get it fixed as you could before. And the expense to the public purse is escalating. Uh, it would be perhaps surprising if the member wasn't expressing some level of disappointment at whatever was being said. Uh, can I say, obviously, uh, may have skipped the member's notice that, for instance, uh, Riverside School in Antrim is in County Antrim. And you will find, uh, I appreciate that a friend of mine has an expression, every day is a school day. It may actually surprise the member to actually realise that it is also a controlled school on that, on that basis. And indeed, as part of the overall picture, there are uh, 10 out of the 18 schools are from the controlled sector on that basis. And indeed, the boundaries of County Antrim 
will also include some of those, for instance, within Belfast, uh, fall within County Antrim. Um, and without getting a lesson in, in geography in, in relation. In terms of the selection of these, these are done by rigorous um, objective criteria which have been applied by uh, officials. Now, I did not seek in any way to interfere with those or adjust the list in any shape or form in relation to it because I think it's, it's important that those are there fair and objectively. And it will mean that within any tranche, some schools will be successful and others won't. In terms of the uh, publication of any list, I suspect that uh, I'll consult with officials that may well be that uh, that is not the basis upon which schools put in on that, that basis, but I will, I will contact the member in terms of what the level of, of uh, discussion can be. And it may well be that from a geographical point of view, on a particular occasion, one area will be of benefit, another area will benefit, and that is on the basis then of objective, objective criteria, that's the way it should be. Okay, thank you. And I'll call uh, Claire Sugden as our final speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And like others, I will congratulate the Minister. I think his appointment in particular is probably the most critical to provide continuity to what is going to be a very worryingly short mandate in the time that we have left. Um, I suppose generally I, I get quite frustrated um, in how government spends money. Um, more often than not, it feels like we are firefighting, trying to uh, deal with the issues that present ourselves, and, and we're quite reactionary, when really we should be trying to focus on investing to save so that we can actually hopefully try and save some money. And indeed, if the Prime Minister isn't forthcoming with the money that we had hoped, that's something that all government ministers will have to have a keen focus on. So can I ask the Minister, is he considering the hemorrhaging of resources that many schools have, and it's a point that I wish to pick up from Ms Bradshaw and Mr Beggs around the multi-split school sites when he's considering capital investments. I appreciate there's two different funding pots, but I think we need to look at this strategically if we're going to actually start uh, getting somewhere with this issue. I, I, don't, I don't in any way disagree with the, the, the member, and I think it's part of the wider picture. I think capital investment has got to be aligned with the overall position. I think we need to see as I said, a levels of reform and transformation, and some of that will mean within the school estate. Uh, it may well be that, as the member mentioned, that there's a certain level of invest to save, that, that through that transformation there may need to be certain money to put up front to produce both better financial and better educational uh, facilities. Uh, we shouldn't also kid ourselves that if we are looking at transformation of the, the broader school estate, sometimes that will mean difficult decisions about people can buy into a wider picture, perhaps whenever it gets to their own individual area. Uh, there it is human nature they'll be a lot more protective and supportive of that, that particular side of things. But it is, the member is right in terms of providing a more strategic vision and something which is more long term in its approach. Okay, thank you. And that concludes questions on the statement. I have received notice from the Minister of Health that he wishes to make a statement. So I'm going to invite uh, Minister Robin Swan. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I am grateful for the opportunity to be able to make a statement to the Assembly on the industrial action in the health and social care service and the work to